Genesis chapter 30. Hi, I'm Lydia and I'm currently reading the entire Bible, chapter by chapter, day by day, until I get to the end of it. I started in James, so I've been doing this for a, quite a while now. Feel free to drop in here, there or anywhere. I've, yeah, you know, it's like six books now, I think. So we're cooking with gas. But yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Genesis chapter 30. I've, I usually have more of a spiel, but I forgot it. So here we go. When Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, give me children or I'll die. Very dramatic. <laughs> Jacob became angry with her and said, am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Then she said, here is Bilhah, my maidservant. Sleep with her so that she can bear children for me and that through her, I too can build a family. So she gave, her, so she gave him her servant Bilhah as a wife. Jacob slept with her and she became pregnant and bore him a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son. Because of this, she named him Dan. Rachel's servant Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister and I have won. So she named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her maidservant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as his wife. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, what good fortune. So she named him Gad. Then, there's no then. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, how happy I am. The woman, the women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. During wheat harvest, Reuben went out into the fields and bought, found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you take my son's mandrakes too? Very well, Rachel said. He can sleep with you tonight and return for your son's mandrakes. Fine. So when Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me, she said. I have hired you. <laughs> I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she became pregnant and bore Jacob a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has rewarded me for giving my maidservant to my husband. So she named him Issachar. Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has presented me with a precious gift. This time my husband will treat me with honour, because I have borne him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Sometime later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and opened her womb. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph and said, may the Lord add to me another son. Jacob's flocks increase. After Rachel gave birth to Jacob, wow, to Jacob. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives and children for whom I have served you and I will be on my way. You know how much work I have done for you. But Laban said to him, if I have found favour in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said to him, you know how I have worked for you and how your livestock has fared under my care. The little you had before I came has greatly increased. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when, I, when may I do something for my own household? What shall I give you? He asked. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you will do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark coloured lamb and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages. And my honesty will testify for me in the future. Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me. Any goat in my possession that is not speckled or spotted, or any lamb that is not dark coloured, will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Laban. Let it be as you have said. That same day he removed all male goats that were streaked or spotted, and all the speckled or spotted female goats, all that had white on them, and all the dark coloured lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a three-day journey between himself and Jacob, while Jacob continued to tend the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond and plane trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark 
and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in the heat, when the flocks were in heat, oh, I know what that, I know what that means. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. When the flocks were in heat, wow, I've even lost my place, and came to drink, they made it in front of the branches. I'm losing it. And they bore young that were streaked or speckled or bound. That was, wow. And they bore young that were streaked or speckled or spotted. I lost track. Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest face the streaked and dark coloured animals that belonged to Laban. Thus, he made separate flocks for himself and did not put them with Laban's animals. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, I know what that means, Jacob would place the branches in the troughs in front of the animals so that they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and maid servants and men servants and camels and donkeys. And that's the word of the day. So minor side note, in heat, the reason why I got so excited, maybe maybe I shouldn't have been so excited, but I found out that a few, like a year ago, I found out that dogs get their period. Which makes sense, but I hate it. Then, later on, I found out that actually they are in heat because dog years are like different to human years. So when we say period, it's like the rest of your life. When dogs say it, it's like 40 days and 40 nights. Maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit less. I completely forget. A period of time, like a decently substantial one where they bleed. And so they have to have like diapers on, like female dogs have to have diapers. I didn't know that every single kind of animal went through that. I say every single kind. We now know sheep, goats, dogs but that's basically all of them three plus so yeah little fun fact it wasn't even really a fact i just i just gushed anyway so thank you so much for joining me today and for reading the bible with me and pouring into your own relationship with god great stuff proud of you and yeah god willing i'll see you guys tomorrow and if i don't then god bless you today and tomorrow you know in case i do not post bye <laughs>